On American History TV on C-SPAN 3, over 40 years ago, a Senate Select Committee chaired by Senator Frank Church, Democrat from Idaho, was convened to investigate the intelligence activities of the CIA, FBI, IRS, and the NSA. And you have suggested that there might be some inherent right that circumvents the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, guaranteeing citizens against unreasonable searches and seizures without a warrant, bearing upon um, the uh, national security um, responsibilities of the president. Two former staffers of the Church Committee are with us and will be with us uh, to help provide some historical context and understand the significance of the 40-year-old video that you are about to see. From New York City, Frederick Fritsch Swartz, who was the committee's chief counsel, is with us. And here in our studio in Washington, D.C., is Elliot Maxwell, who was a counsel to the committee as Pennsylvania Republican Senator Richard Swiker's designee. Thank you to both of you for joining us. So let's just start with the basics, Mr. Maxwell. If, if, would you explain really how the church committee got constituted? What was the impetus? Uh, I guess my view is that most of it came about because of a series of articles about uh, activities by the intelligence community within the United States, written by Cy Hirsch and followed up by many other people, it was in the context of uh, the post the post Watergate hearings, the resignation of President Nixon, uh, a still continuing concern about the Vietnam War, and the uh, thought that the intelligence agencies were being directed against U.S. citizens led to some public concern and a response from both the Senate and the House to establish uh, special committees to look at the intelligence activities overall. It was in that context that I think you need to place the activities of the committee and uh, the response to things that happened during the Vietnam War, the civil rights movement, and other political activities led to the creation of these two committees. Some people thought maybe we would just expose more bad things by the, about the Nixon administration, but our single most important finding was to say that every one of six presidents, started with, starting with Franklin Roosevelt and running through Nixon, four Democrats and two Republicans, every one of them had abused their secret powers. And by making that broad finding, which I think was our most important, it helped with the internal cohesion of the committee and it helped with its national reputation. But what happened in my judgment in this area where I got sucked in, when I should have known better, and where many other more intelligent, sophisticated people got sucked in in other areas, is the whole concept of some you know, of inherent executive power that really extends beyond anything contemplated by those who made the incremental claims as we went through the years. Kate Scott, associate historian of the U.S. Senate, you've just been watching Tom Charles Houston at the end of his testimony there, or the portion that we're showing. What's your reaction to that? Well, it's just a terrific example of this ongoing debate that we've had in this country that animated the Constitutional Convention where the Constitution was originally created. This, this, caref this need to carefully balance powers within the federal government. I think history is best when it reminds us that the current issues that we're grappling with today are in some ways not new. We need to look back on these uh, periods in our past and say, okay, we've, we've faced these problems before. We, these have been, we've, we've seen these as crises in the past. How are we gonna respond to them in a, in a way today that, that is mindful of the, the progress that we made then and also maybe the limitations of that investigation 40 years ago? Kate Scott, thank you very much. Thanks.